Now, voting is underway in Maldives. People are voting for the parliamentary elections, which will test President Muizu's tilt towards China and away from India, the luxury tourism hotspot's traditional benefactor. Now, this will be Muizu's first major political test in today's parliamentary elections that will determine the extent of his control over the parliament. Remember, the elections are being held in 93 seats in total, and the opposition party, the Maldivian Democratic Party, with 41 seats in hand, currently dominates the People's Majlis or the country's parliament. I'm being joined by my colleague Ghazali, joining us with more details. Ghazali, now polling is underway in Maldives. Around 602 polling booths have been set up as well. What's the ground situation? See, uh, two countries are eyeing and closely watching these elections. It's India and China. Because since Moizu came to, uh, became the president last year, his anti-India stance and getting closer to China has been criticized by the domestic parties because the local sentiments, as per the reports, is that his instance of asking Indian troops to leave Maldives has received a lot of backlash. Now, uh, MDP, the Maldivian Democratic Party, from uh, which party there was ex-president Mr. Ibrahim Soli. He was ousted by Moizu in the last uh, presidential elections. So this time around, though Soli's party has got the majority in the parliament, in this elections it will test whether Soli's, the ex-president's party, will continue to sway over the parliament because Mr. Moizu, despite being the president, doesn't have the majority in the parliament and that that is a big challenge for him when it comes to passing ma major legislative changes. Uh, in a couple of, uh, couple of weeks ago, the financial intelligence unit of the Maldivian Monetary Department has also uh, leaked some reports associating Mr. Moizu with corruption, with financial ir irregularities in 2018. So those reports are also have also become a hot election topic there in Maldives. And it will have to be seen whether Mr. Soli's party regains the majority in parliament or Mr. Moizu's anti-India plank or his anti-India stance will sell in this election in his favour. Right, thank you, Ghazali, for bringing us uh, those details and contextualizing uh, the elections in Maldives for us. At this point, I'm being joined by Ahmed Aid, who's a journalist at uh, Adadu, which is an online media forum in Maldives. I'm also being joined by Ambassador Rajiv Bhatia, who's the former head of division in uh, the MEA. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, now, uh, in fact, Mr. Bhatia also was dealing with the Maldives uh, when he was the head of um, a division in the MEA. Uh, let me start off with uh, Mr. Aid. Thank you for joining us. How is the public's perception yeah, of Muizu and his party at the moment in Maldives? At the moment, uh, it's mixed, uh, to be honest, because uh, we have seen a lot of different uh, policies being brought forward. Uh, we can see the India out policy being one of the most discussed policy here. Uh, I think the pro-China narrative has been also one of the policies that has been discussed but in regards of today's uh, elections, I don't see as somebody who has been monitoring the situation closely, I don't see any of the parties gaining a major majority. I think it will be very tight, uh, maybe 50-50. Right. Uh, let me open Ambassador Bhatia at this point. Ambassador Bhatia, now is the pro-China policy going to cost Moizu's PNC the polls? Thank you very much. Uh, I also bring to you greetings of Gateway House, the think tank where I work. To answer your question, uh, I think uh, it would be best to wait for the results. Yeah. Uh, we would know uh, because the context is a little bit complicated. When the presidential elections took place, Mr. Muizu's party won. Then this was followed by the election of the mayor, where his party lost. So now this is the third and final stage of the political match where uh, the election is for the Majlis or the National Assembly, uh, where as your correspondent rightly pointed out, the previous ruling party still has majority. Mm. So the question open is whether people of Maldives, a majority of them, would support uh, President Muizu's party or the uh, previous leader, uh, President Soli's party. Uh, essentially, Two points uh, I think need to be appreciated. The political uh, environment is fractured. There are several groups and there is no consensus among them. And therefore, the second point, the important thing is, what are the issues of concern for the people? And my reading and my perception is that yes, seen from India, the India-China uh, equation is the major issue there. But more importantly, local issues, uh, 
you know, people's welfare, education, medical treatment, transport, connectivity, inflation, all this would also matter in this election because uh, this is the election uh, for the parliament. So we will have to wait and watch and uh, from the Indian point of view, hope that uh, uh, the country will give a mature verdict. Right. Uh, in fact, we'll come back to the point where, you know, this if the opposition wins, it could possibly be a boost for India. Uh, but before that, uh, Mr. Aid, like uh, Ambassador Bhatia was pointing out, there are several local issues also at hand. Uh, when it comes to the economy, do you think Moise's policies uh, cost the economy to take a hit in the Maldives? And if so, what are the challenges that uh, the new government that will be formed uh, are going to face? I think one of the most... Uh one of the biggest policies he saw during the election was that he wouldn't be one side, that he wouldn't be pro any country, he would be pro Maldives. But after being in office, we have been seeing several major projects being given to Chinese uh, companies, and one after another, they have been given to Chinese companies. So there, this question has been asked if there's any corruption involved. I think your correspondent uh, also mentioned about the uh, uh, financial intelligence unit uh, reports there has been no clearance about that from any of the government bodies so far we have asked many questions there has been no uh, transparency about these questions being asked and the whole uh, country is going to a poll today uh, with no transparency about a major corruption scandal mm. in the middle of the scandal we are going uh, to a vote that will decide the future of the country Right, uh, Ambassador Bhatia, now uh, there are of course corruption charges against uh, Mizu's government and his leaders as well. Uh, but interestingly, from India's perspective, India has increased its investment in Maldives uh, and especially tourism has been a major point, point of contention. How do you see this playing out in the future? Uh, if, you know, either way that the election goes, if Mizu comes to power or if the opposition wins? So the first point here to note is that obviously New Delhi is having some trouble in dealing with the president. Uh, I think it is an open uh, public knowledge uh, and uh, despite all the provocations and even some insults uh, thrown in uh, New Delhi's direction, the government has continued to behave in a very uh, sober and mature manner towards Malay. Uh, clearly, uh, the tourist inflow from India into Maldives has uh, been impacted adversely and this has caused a great deal of concern to the tourism industry in Maldives. But I would like to make a broader point which is that Maldives is our neighbor. It is uh, perhaps the smallest neighbor. Uh, you know, just to give you uh, a hard figure, barely 3 lakh people are forming the total electorate for this election. So fundamentally, India's uh, perspective is that the nation has to continue to win the hearts and souls of the people of Maldives. Uh, they have to appreciate that India is a friend. India is the first nearest friend and India is a dependable right. friend. So effectively, uh, the hope is that people of Maldives voting for elections will recognize that uh, India means well uh, and they will vote uh, for parties that will carry forward a stronger relationship with India. Right. Uh, Mr. I, the last comments from you. Now, the, another major question is that of the Indian crews and technicians that are stationed in Maldives, whom the Muzu government wanted to oust as well. Uh, what is the ground situation as far as that's concerned? Uh, the, the thing about that is we have many journalists and uh, the civil about the civilians being here to operate the technical people being here the governance has been asking a lot of questions about it because there has been no trans transparency about it they are even asking questions if it has been actually done because mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't make sense for civilians to operate military vehicles so i think there's uh, for every promise president who has made in his presidential run, people are asking if he's actually fulfilling those promises. So uh, I think the sh it has been shifted, the political landscape has been shifted over the past five months, but uh, it's just five months, so it could be too early to tell, but we have to wait and watch. Right.
Right, yeah. uh, thank you, Mr. Ed and uh, Ambassador Bhatia for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this development. We'll, of course, continue tracking the story as the elections take place in Maldives.